Joy and honor and a privilege to be able to welcome our author today in Cookbook Corner because for years I have enjoyed her on television. I have aspired to cook even just a small portion of what she does because she does it so effortlessly and with so much joy and with so much passion. We are thrilled and honored to tell you that already 6,000 of Ina Garten's brand new cookbooks are gone on QVC. It's a rare occasion when a cookbook is on easy pay and today in honor of her very special visit, it's the only day at this price and we put it on easy pay for you. Two easy payments on your credit card. But beyond all of that, the most thrilling part of all of this is finally being able to say, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to QVC, the Barefoot Contessa, Ina Garten. Hello there. So happy to be here. Nice How to see you. Mwah. Thank you for that. I am <laughs> so you. tickled to Thank have you, you. here. It's I know I've been gushing since you arrived, but I just, I'm just so thrilled. I'm Thank a huge you. fan. Thank you. And even more than a fan, I am so inspired by your cooking. Thank you. Because what you do is passion, what you do is joyful, and what you do is social. You and I were chatting that cooking is yeah. about being social and sharing food with the people you love, and that's what we do on In the Kitchen with David. Well, I just think it's about really, if you cook, everybody shows up, and that's what I love. Exactly. That's the best part of it. But this yeah. book, your ninth, congratulations. Isn't that crazy? Oh, it's not crazy <laughs> at all. We are so excited that you do these Thank books. You. That everything is make ahead. So Everything. you're going to give us little tips with every recipe in the book on how we can make it ahead and take some of the pressure off when time is short. Well, the genesis of it really was that I, I asked my assistant, I thought I knew the answer, um, what's the most frequent question that we get? And she said, can I make it ahead? Can I make Christmas cookies in July? And can I, bake, uh, can I defrost them in, in December? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you can make Christmas cookies ahead, but not that way, and I'm going to show you how to do it in the book. Exactly, and I read that in the book. I've read yeah. your book cover to cover. Oh, I've been, I got an early oh. copy, and I was <laughs> so, so thrilled. I Thank actually you. got to uh, do a little cooking from it as well. And one of the things that I cooked from your book, what did you and make? I put the, po uh, put the the post up on Facebook, your twice baked sweet potatoes. Aren't they great? These are marvelous, but tell everyone your little tip for making these ahead. Well, you know, one of the things that I look for in a recipe when I'm thinking of what to make is I'm looking for something that's traditional, right. that you know pretty much what it's going to taste like, but with a twist. So okay. it's like better than you imagine. Right. And so what I did was I add a little Taleggio cheese to that, mm, which makes so it creamy delightful. and it melts, and you can make mm. the entire thing in advance, put it in the oven, mm -hmm. and then, <laughs> is that good? Are you happy? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my <laughs> word. And, it's and then so you great. just throw it in the oven and heat it up. So when you're making Thanksgiving dinner or you're making something in the autumn, you can really make this in advance, uh. leave it in the refrigerator, and it's done. You can make it two days in advance. It's just delightful. You were Thank saying you. earlier, Ina, that you are never going to do turkey the old fashioned way again. Never. <laughs> now that you've come up with this way of making it ahead, mm -hmm. this is not only your roast turkey, but your onion sage gravy. Yeah. And it's kind of a revelation because usually what happens is me, your, your guests are there. They're they're waiting for dinner. The right. turkey comes out of the oven. You're nervous. Is it done? Right. Uh, so instead of be, having to make the gravy in advance after the turkey comes out, sure. So I make the gravy a day or two in ahead. When you're making Thanksgiving dinner, it's great to be able to do that. I make the turkey earlier in the day, slice it, and put it on a big oven-proof platter, and the whole thing goes into the oven before you Genius. serve dinner. So what happens is, you know, how many times you put the turkey out and it's cold mm -hmm. in ten minutes? The gravy keeps it moist and it keeps it hot. This is and why it's we just love our delicious. Ina. It's this so it. delicious. I'll and never make a Thanksgiving dinner the same way and again. And here is Ina's make ahead roast turkey With and sage onion sage, sage gravy. Onion sage gravy. I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna like it. All right, Ina. <laughs> we do good? a little something on this show. Go to happy dance. What? Oh, you do. <laughs> are you ready to join in with a happy dance? Are you, I think you're a, a better dancer than I am. Well, all you need to do is put the heads up and go happy dance, happy dance. That's, That's a good it. one. Make isn't a it? head Thank turkey Thank happy you. dance. This and is Ina's happy and dance. And it looks so great because it's all when you put it out, it's already been sliced. How many times have you made a turkey when it looks like it, you threw it up and a bomb exploded? Exactly. <laughs> because and, and if you're not comfortable with that, at least yeah. you can take your time with it before the take guests arrive. Exactly. Don't ever carve it at the dinner table. There's too much pressure. Oh. <laughs> all right. So we want to let you what know we're you very, like? very busy on our phone lines. We're approaching 9,000 wow. books gone. Wow. Everyone's exactly. utilizing Easy Pay. Everyone's grabbing this fantastic book. This is amazing. This is your raspberry French toast. It's made with um, challah bread. It yes? is made with challah. With an egg bread. Any kind of a brioche bread, something like that. You know, when you're serving dis um, breakfast for a crowd, I hate making one piece of French toast after another. Right. You're at the stove, your friends are having fun, and what I decided to do is put the whole thing together like a bread pudding. And oh. so it's challah, it's a custard, it's raspberries, it's orange. I understand it's orange. have a little powdered oh, sugar. And, I mean, anything's better with powdered sugar. 
and you just serve the whole thing at once and everybody helps themselves. Oh, it's delightful. So Look at that. You can Shall sleep we serve late? a little bit of that up and oh, have I a little think taste? So. I think so. I think so. We do that. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, so it's got a really nice cr custard on the inside and oh, fresh raspberries. It looks that beautiful, great? beautiful. And you know, you can assemble the whole thing the night before, uh -huh. put it in the refrigerator, and then just bake it in the morning. So oh you've got my. fresh, Here basically French toast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he can't say anything for a while. <laughs> I didn't plan on a bite that big. I know that's amazing. Is that good? Thank oh, you. Oh my Thank goodness. You. And I love the raspberries and the orange zest, and it's got a nice, it's what I'm always looking for, I mean, it's a, again, I'm looking for something familiar, like mm -hmm. French toast, but really to sort of bump up the flavor a little bit with ra fresh raspberries, orange zest, really. It's a real breakfast thing, right? I need to let everyone know, 2,500 people just jumped on the phone lines. Wow. We've now taken orders for 11,000 wow. books. Wow. I know wow. you have to understand that these kind of numbers for cookbooks are reserved for only a few. Oh, and we are you. we are honored to have you like here. Like your book, right? Well, you're kind, you're kind. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I humbly Isn't bow in, in deference you. to you. My goodness, <laughs> I've learned so much from just watching you. Thank Can you. we talk, pardon me, about triberry tri crumble. crumble. Now, when I saw this picture in the book, I begged that we make this recipe because <laughs> it just looks so delightful. And there's all these great summer berries that we can get yeah. our hands on now and freeze and then make this later exactly, if we like, right? Exactly. Or you can use frozen berries from the grocery store. It's uh, raspberries, blueberries, and strawberries. Oh. And you mix them together. And again, I want a little something that's special in there. So I put lemon zest in it. So it brightens it, it's, it up a bit. It brightens it and it takes away the, sort of a little of the sweetness. And then I do like an oatmeal crumble on the top so mm. it's got crunch. Mm. And I don't know. And it just what do you think? looks delightful. <laughs> mm. He's a very good audience. Mm. <laughs> oh. Is that good? I can taste the lemon. You can really taste the lemon. And it balances the sweet. One thing a lot of people don't do is use the zest of the lemon. And it's so much it's more flavor. So much more flavor than, than the juice. This Ooh. has a little of each. I need to put this down before I happy dance. I'm afraid I'll spill it. <laughs> happy dance. That's the triberry crumble happy dance. Thank it's you. amazing. Thank now, you. Now, these potatoes really caught oh. my eye in the book. Now, these are baked potatoes. They are. But they are made in a very special way when you bake them. Yeah. And then you do something special with the topping. But first, when you wash these, you tell us to put coarse sea salt. Is that right? Coarse sea salt. And herbs on the outside and so it flavors the skin of it too mm. so I mean everybody knows baked potatoes and sour cream they're perfectly delicious but they're not special so I rub these with olive oil and, and lemon zest and herbs on the outside right. and, and then, then you I wrap make, it in tin foil and bake them right uh, no you just bake them on the uh, oh, right no, on the rack the okay, right fine. on the rack so okay. it's nice and then then what I do is in advance I make a puree of whipped uh, feta Lemon, lemon juice. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> oh, oh, have I got your attention? Yes, ma'am. And olive oil. <laughs> and you can make that a couple of days before and keep it in the fridge. And then you just bake the potatoes and you open them up instead of sour cream. You put feta and um, lemon <sighs> juice and olive oil. And it's <sighs> so delicious. It's and it's special. So it's a traditional thing but done with a twist. Absolutely. And you can make the whole thing in advance, which is so great. I know one thing that uh, we do so much on In the Kitchen with David is comfort food. It's yeah. very much my culinary point of view. Yeah. My book is all about Mine comfort too. food, and yeah. of course it is. And one thing you do so beautifully is chicken pot pie, oh, but this yeah. is a French chicken it pot is. pie. You know, I'm coming around this way to grab my sample so you can tell everyone what makes it French. You know, one of the things I think to make cooking really easy is right if you master one recipe, you can do a lot of different things. You of can, course. If you can make a pot pie, you can make chicken pot pie, lobster pot pie, vegetable pot pie. Mm. What I did in this book is a French chicken pot pie. So I added in cremini mushrooms, I added mm. um, leeks mm -hmm. and fresh tarragon. And it just made something fairly lovely and traditional into something you could serve your mother-in-law. Oh, this is going to be <laughs> if you have a mother in law. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> So it's just got a little more flavor. It's a little more sophisticated. Yes, it does, but, it's but really, not difficult. But, not diff but it's just as easy as any pot pie. And this has actually is easier because it has puff pastry on the top, Absolutely. which you buy in the grocery store. So really, it's you about time saving. It. Exactly. It's, it's really easy. And it always comes out perfectly. I'm going to step to the side here, Ida, so that I can okay. brag on your book a little Thank bit. Your you. photography is beautiful. Thank you. It's really I important know, to me. And we're going to be talking about these salted caramel nuts. They're in the Ooh. bowl right in front of you. Don't get me started. These are marvelous. <laughs> these are smashed potatoes. I love these. They're Parmesan chive smashed potatoes. I have read your book cover to cover. I got a sample of it a couple of weeks ago. Your publisher sent me an early copy oh, good. so that I would be able to sit with it and really read it. I, my grandmother taught me to read cookbooks like novels. <laughs> and these are beautiful. They're the baked potatoes with the whipped feta. There's the zucchini bowl. Oh, my word, everything in here is just so delightful. And then, of course, your Jeffrey is in the book, too. There <laughs> we <course>. go. <laughs> and I know he's watching today. Is that right? I, I don't know. He I told be. him not to watch, but I bet, I bet he is. Oh, he might be. Well, Jeffrey, if you're out there, hello. Hey, why don't we talk 
gluten free. Yeah. Now, you know our Mary is gluten free. She mentioned that to you earlier. So many of our foodies that watch the show are, and this is your decadent gluten free chocolate cake. And it's a really good chocolate cake. And this, I, I sort of give an extra flavor by adding coffee to, to the chocolate, I love which that. brings out the chocolate flavor. You don't know the coffee's there, but it tastes better. Can I grab uh, a sample sure, back here? Sure, absolutely. So, what this is, is um, it's, it's a very dense, sort of uh, fudgy. I'm oh, there you, you are. There we are. Uh, kind of fudgy chocolate cake, and it has ganache on the top. And there, it's a very little flour in it, but it's gluten free flour. And Ooh. I use cup for cup, mm. which is great. It, it uses other kinds of flours. <laughs> <laughs> he hated it. Oh, I don't know what word. to do. <laughs> you promised me at the top of the show that yeah. I would never believe this is gluten free. You, and you're you, exactly right. It doesn't, I, there's no reason with really good gluten free flours, mm. there's no reason to even, for anybody to know it was gluten free. This is amazing. And we'll save a big slice for Mary. Here. I know she's yeah. excited to try this as well. <laughs> this is your chocolate banana crumb cake. Is that right? How, how, how good a combination is that? Oh. Chocolate and banana. I love it. One of the things we love to hear Ina say is, how good is that? How good is or that? Or how easy is that? <laughs> oh. And both of those things are true here. Is well, that right? Well, actually, this is really great because you can make a pan of it. And because it's so moist, mm -hmm. that it really, it, it lasts a long time. So you can make it a day or two in advance. And toasted almonds on and top. Toasted well, we just put the almonds on top and then mm. they go in the oven. You're not, it's so easy mm. to do. You don't have to toast them. They toast themselves. I know that's the best crumb cake I've ever Thank eaten in my you. life. <laughs> and I've eaten <laughs> my fair share. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I have. Oh, it's my a good word. One, isn't it? But it's traditional flavors, but it's like better than you expect, isn't it? It's incredibly moist. Thank I mean, you. Mm. What is that layer in the middle? It's that's chocolate. A, oh, of course it's chocolate. Yeah. And then. And oh, banana. And, it's got and the, the banana. Mash, the, the banana really keeps it moist. Mm. Mm. It gives you that great pop of flavor. Yeah. We have a Thank phone call, you. I know. Oh, and we I do? Would, we would okay. love to go off to our phone lines. We're going to welcome Susan here in Pennsylvania. Susan, meet the one and only Ina Garten. <laughs> Hi, Susan. I am one of. Hello, Ina. Hello, David. It's a pleasure to talk to both of you. I'm one of Thank Ina's you. biggest fans. Thank ever. you. <laughs> I, have, I have every one of your books who have brought entertaining in my home to a a whole new level. Thank you, Susan. Like, That's so wonderful. And, Thank you. Oh, and you've made it. You make me want to really shine in the kitchen and to have my table and and my appetizers and. And you keep it simple, I, right? Just I, keep it really simple, and it's that. just great. You are my idol. Thank you, Susan. And Sue. my husband adores you because he gets to eat everything <laughs> and you don't mind right <laughs> oh not at all you have brought the love of cooking and entertaining to us all and i thank cannot you. thank you enough thank you so much well, thank you susan I, we appreciate I can't even, they 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 asked me what recipes i like and i started just rattling them off. <laughs> like, way too many and David, you are a great team member with Ina. Oh, yes, he right. really is. Thank you. Really I am. Is. I am as big a fan as you are, Susan. And I, you don't see, but my knees are knocking right now. I'm so excited <laughs> to have Ina with us. I mean, my whole body is alive right now. <laughs> well, I hope you like the new book as well. Well, Susan, we'll oh, get the new oh, book I, out to I, you. I buy every one of your books. No matter what. Thank you. Excellent. Well, it'll be shipping out at the end of October, and I'm so glad you took advantage of it today. Stay tuned. We'll show you some more food. Okay. Thank you so very much, both of you. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Susan. Bye bye. <laughs> now, bye bye. Well, I know you mentioned in this book that you put your a recipe for homemade chicken stock in all of your books I because do. it becomes the base for so many of your recipes. I asked that they included this on the table today because I think most of us would love to be able to make Ina's version of classic, wonderful, rich chicken stock. So we we prepared this with all the ingredients so you could kind of give us a little tutorial of what's going on here. Well, I think there are a few recipes that people get nervous about, and one of them is chicken stock. And the truth is, you fill a huge pot with water, you throw in chicken, you throw in carrots, celery all kinds of vegetables, fresh herbs, you turn on the stove and in and you just let it simmer away for four hours. And what you end up with is, I, I think it's like liquid gold. It makes every recipe that I've you use. That. It's, it's like you're in my head, Ina. <laughs> I've said that myself. I call it liquid it gold on the show. It makes such a difference, and it's so, it's so easy to do. You also give us tips in the book on how we can refrigerate and or freeze chicken for stock. Is that right? And, absolutely. Exactly. So, so make you, extra, and then you can have it on hand for other recipes when time if, is short. If you open my freezer door, you'd see chicken stock. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe exactly. a little vodka. Well, 
oh, you know, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. <laughs> it's like the whole room knows that you know me right now. All right. Well, if we're going to talk vodka, let's talk about your cranberry martini, uh, shall we? Are they, oh, I was going to save do that. Do we for have the some? End. Well, we do. Well, I think we need them. Oh, we yes, we do. To, we were going to save that for the end to yeah. toast, but I think since it came up, why not, right? This, actually, Bobby Flay taught me how to make these. They're fantastic. Well, so there's you, one for you. I'll grab. Actually, oh, you good. have this one. Okay. You have this one, and I'll grab the other. Thank you. That was nice and chilled for you. But tell us about your cranberry martini. What you do is you take vodka and infuse it with cranberries and orange. Oh, nice. And so the and you do that like you can do it weeks before, and you let it sit in the fridge, and then you just add a little triple sec and you shake it. And the key here is most drinks are made like one at a time. I make a whole pitcher of them, so you're, you can you're serve. You're my own heart. So you can serve all your friends at once. Here we go. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Cheers. Are we doing it the rest of the show after this? Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to. And if we are going to do the rest of the show, I'm going to have to put this down because that's, that's really amazing. <laughs> that's going down like candy. That's really good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I need to give everyone an update now and let you know we have now taken orders in just the last 15 minutes for 21,000 oh, cookbooks. 21,000 cookbooks. <laughs> 2,000 people just jammed onto the phone line wow. so they can make sure they get these before they're gone. The reason you want to buy this book on QVC, first of all, our price, very attractive compared to what it might be when you would go to find it on the street at the end of October. Yeah. The other piece is we've got it on Easy Pay today. So okay. we can help all of our foodies out there who'd like to split their payments up over two months, but still start cooking immediately like yeah. Ina, okay, because great. her recipes will come to you as soon as this book ships out on the 28th of October. And Ina, this is such a fantastic lineup of recipes. One that I saw in the book that I particularly and specifically asked our stylist to prepare were your skillet brownies. Oh. Now let's take a look here because I these- I can't imagine why you would want to make those. Well, you know, <laughs> I love my sweets, but I'll tell you, this is amazing because you, you call for this to be made in a five Inch skillet, is that yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, cast iron if you can find it. If you can find it. If you can't, any skillet is any, but, any small skillet is great. But it's this whole idea of individual portions that yes. are so popular. I just, I, it's like a cupcake. Every, like every kid has their own cupcake. It's just so nice to have your own. But this, this was really our classic breakfast contessa brownie recipe. Uh -huh. And I thought if I put it in a skillet, you don't have to let it cool mm -hmm. and cut it. Mm -hmm. You can actually serve it warm out of the oven. And put a great big old dollop of well, ice cream on of top. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Are you kidding? But of course. It's moist. It's so, fantastic. Just as I knew it would be. <laughs> and what's wonderful is you can make it in advance. You put it in the skillets in the refrigerator or the or the batter in the refrigerator and just throw it into the oven before dinner. <sighs> so you've got it all done before you your it's guests arrive. Heaven is Thank what you. it is. Now, can we talk about your New York strip steak? Uh, My favorite steak is a New York strip. Oh, and mine too. And I love it. And because I think this is the thing I've made the most of everything that in this book. Is that right? It's is, so is, easy. Is Jeffrey a big fan of Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey loves ship? this. He really loves this. Is this one this. of his yeah, favorites? One of his favorites. So what it is, it's got coffee and it's got a coffee and spi like a chipotle chili spice rub mm, on it, mm. which you can do a day or two in advance. Just leave Perfect. it in the fridge. You heat up the grill, two minutes on one side, two minutes on the other side, and then you put the lid on for eight uh. minutes. And it, I mean, it comes out perfectly every single time. You know what I also love about the way you grill, Ina? Yeah. You grow with charcoal. Oh, I do. And I yeah, love it. I, I grew up down south, yeah. and we always grow with charcoal. You the can't flavor, beat it. you can't mimic yeah. it. Now, yeah. I like my gas grill, and yeah. I use it on occasion, right. but when I really want to do good old fashioned grilling, yeah. I bust out the charcoal. And this actually has a little secret ingredient. It has a little bit of brown sugar in the, spy, in the rub so that it kind of caramelizes when you put it on the grill. Of course. So good. Well, we so can't good. have the Barefoot Contessa here without <laughs> something fabulous like this zucchini goat this cheese is, tart. Thank you. Now, this looks fancy, but it's really easy and to help make. Help us feel not intimidated okay. by this. So first, the, the crust is made. You can make that in advance, and you make it in the food processor. Okay. And if you follow the instructions, it's foolproof. Comes okay. out perfectly, light and flaky. Excellent. And then it's just got an herb goat cheese spread on on it and sliced zucchini. You put the whole thing in the refrigerator and just throw it in the oven before lunch. Do you lunch. use a food processor or a mandolin for your zucchini? You can use a mandolin if you want to, or you can just slice it thinly yourself. Or just slice it thinly yeah, yourself. Exactly. And if you're comfortable with One of those Japanese ones mm -hmm. are really inexpensive and they're great. We have a few of those mandolins on QVC. Oh, you do? We do. Oh, well, then a mandolin would be perfect. What we need to do is have you come back and visit. We'll just get all our kitchen goodies out. We'll have a big time together. I'm How very good that? at that mandolin. I bet you are. I can only imagine. So this is really fantastic. Also, I, I requested this recipe because I love green peas, and I think yeah. most of us do. And I think if there's one vegetable you can get your children to eat, it's usually it's a green peas. peas. Yeah, exactly but you right. also dress these up a bit. How do you well, do that? You know, it's interesting. I think usually a classic Italian peas and pancetta is cooked forever. And I like to think 
I like when vegetables have a lot of flavor. So I was kind of thinking about this and I thought, you know what, let me see if I can try. I sauteed the pancetta and shallots and then I took frozen peas and put them in. Mm. Well, you know, they're picked when they're ripe and, they're, and, they're, and they have the best flavor. The whole thing took five minutes. And I, I mean, even I couldn't believe how good it was. Oh. So it was, it's, a gr it's a great recipe to throw together. You've got all the ingredients in the house. You know what, it's just it's like watching Ina on her show, <laughs> except that she's standing beside me. I can hardly contain myself. This is so exciting and I'll tell you, we have an update for everyone at home. For our show today, we brought in 31,000 copies of your new cookbook. Wow. I have fewer than 6,000 books wow. remaining. Wow. And I have 3,000 people on the phone lines, and wow. almost everyone is buying more than one. Wow. I have to assume for gift wow. ideas. Wow. This fabulous. is going very, very quickly. And if you want Ina's book with this wonderful Easy Pay, today's your day because it's the only day we're offering this at the advanced order price. Ina's about to launch her very important book tour. She will be traveling all over the country. She is shooting her television show. I have to believe she's making mental notes for book number 10, I probably. <laughs> and so it's just a unique and an honored opportunity to have her on our air today. We Thank want to take David. a look at your pork tenderloin. Oh yeah, That's Wrapped a good in prosciutto and then served with what I have to believe is apple chutney is gonna make me cry. Okay. <laughs> all right, so talk this to is, us about this, this right there. This is so easy. I mean, you can get pork tenderloins in the grocery store. You can buy them in a big box store when they're, you know, you buy a lot and they're very inexpensive. Wrap it in prosciutto, fresh herbs. You can leave it in the fridge mm -hmm. and then just throw it in the oven for like 20 minutes before dinner and it comes out perfectly. And then I made an apple chutney to go with it. <sighs> and that you can make like a week in advance. Oh. So if somebody shows up at the last minute, you've got, got it all put together. A chutney always does better if we make it in advance because the flavors marinate. marinate. And uh, that's actually a really important point. All of these recipes are in the book not because they're okay made in advance, because they actually take be taste better made in advance. Mm. So why not do it? And Ina explains all that in the book. I'll tell you, I have loved and cherished every page in this Thank book you. because I sat down <laughs> with my own version of your cranberry martini and made my way through the book one evening. It's Thank just you. so exciting. Did you, did you drink the martini? I did. The bet. book gets better with a yeah. cranberry martini. I thought most things do. <laughs> yes, they do. Now, let me give one final update as we wrap up our presentation. Of the 31,000 we brought in for the day, I have 3,800 left. And I have 3,000 people on the wow. phone line, and this is where I always say it's a free for all to the finish line. So <laughs> grab your cocktail, my friend. Okay, I'd be and happy let to. Me tell you. May I toast you? Please. Thank you so much. I've and had such a ball you. being here. And I good luck with your book. Thank you, and good luck with yours. Thank you. And I must say, it is my personal honor to welcome thank you to our show. You. you are welcome in my kitchen anytime. Thank Please you. come back and see I would us. Be delighted. You thank you so much. Delightful. Thank you. Thank and so you. Are you. Thanks, so Ina Garden, everyone, the Barefoot Contessa. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. It's never too early for a cocktail. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. So it's 5 o'clock somewhere, right? Somewhere on this Sunday, right? <laughs> All right, stay on the line. We are very, very busy. And everyone, grab this book before it's gone and get that easy pay. Best of luck to you, Thank my you friend. Thank you very much. Mwah. So we much appreciate fun. you. Thank you. You are.